I've got this uh, very pretty KZ650, we call them Z650s in the UK, you call them KZs in America. It's a potato potato thing, isn't it? Um, can't get on over it quite frankly. But uh, we've got this KZ650 up in the stand today. It's one that came in from I think, somewhere up in the Great Lakes. I think it was Grand Rapids, but I can't quite remember. Um, it came in, it had pod filters on, which I don't like. And so I've got the carbs off to put an airbox on, which I've done since. Um, whilst I had the carbs off, it made sense to stick them in the cleaner, get them cleaned up, set the fuel levels because as we mentioned previously everything flows from the fuel levels on carburetion. It ran and it's very sweet but it didn't run very well for a number of reasons. The first one being the little um, diaphragm in the fuel tap was missing so the pipe that runs up from the uh, inlet manifold up to the little diaphragm that just pumps fuel back and forwards um, that would just drag a neat fuel into the engine. Well, of course, it wasn't going to run properly. So we put a new fuel tap for it, or I've got a, a new fuel tap for it. But in the meantime, I'm going to set up the fuel levels, and uh, once I get the carbs on the bike, we're going to synchronise the carburetors. We did one a couple of weeks ago on another uh, KZ650, and the only problem with them was they were actually pretty well set up from the start. And I've, I've a good reason to believe these are not going to be because when you look at the carburetor slides through the um, through the mouths, they're at different levels. Uh, the slides are at different levels. The gaps on the bottom, so it tells me that the one that's further down is going to have a greater level of vacuum in the manifold than the one uh, that's got a slightly higher gap. So let's have a look at that once we get that far down the road. But in the meantime. Let's have a look at these carburetors and um, we'll start setting them up in the usual Kawasaki manner with the level tube. Okay, thank you. You can just see there, there's almost no gap at all at the bottom of that slide and as I go along you can just see a gap opening for a tiny bit on there. When we get to this end, there's quite a large gap there so that would tell me within that port there's going to be less vacuum than there is in the port that's servicing that slide. There. So that would give me a pretty good idea that once I get them on the bike they're not going to be in sync so that's good for the purpose of what we're trying to do today. With regard to the fuel levels I explained uh, the other day that the the fuel levels are critical to getting your, your fuel mix you're right in that if it's not right your um, the emulsion tubes that sit in the float bowls in the fuel uh, they won't be sitting in the correct level of fuel so they won't emulsify the correct amount of fuel in air and thus your mixture will be uh, rich or lean. So get the fuel levels right as your starting point. So normally you'd set them using the um, a caliper like that and you'd measure the gap at the height of the float from the face of the carburetor you know depending on which model of carburetor it is. On these you use a little uh, um, level tube and you put it into the float bowl as I'm going to do now. I've got my dummy fuel tank set up here and we'll, I've got a mark scribed on the side of the carburetors, on the side of the float bowls, which is just there. You can't quite see it there, but it's actually just where that part of the carb flange or face uh, dips into the bowl proper. So as long as they're sort of sitting there, within plus or minus a millimeter, we're in a good place. So I'll put this carburetor on. I tried the other day and I just couldn't get the correct view for the um, for you guys to see this when I've done it. So I'm going to turn that one on now and make sure that's recording. Yes, it is. And that will be able to see when we're at about the right level. So I'll just pop this out and we'll, we'll put the level plug in there, the level pipe. And this does get messy, as I said before. That's quite tight. Got some squirt. Come on. I can't find my lubricating spray, which is usually lying about here somewhere. All right, we'll do without it. After all. You guys think it's valuable. Now, as I say, this does get messy. So, let's turn the fuel on now and we'll see where that gets to. I don't know if you can see it there guys, there's a little bubble in the tube 
make sure that's vertical and that one the mark I've scribed on is right there where my screwdriver tip is and I could be a pedant and say we're a tiny bit high so and we've got a leaker haven't you always got a leaker anyway I told you it was going to get messy which one so we'll turn our fuel supply on and let's fill the carbs up and let's see where it ends up make sure the bit where the carbs filling now and you can perhaps see that carburetor the height of that is it should be level with where the point of my screwdriver is there and it's actually almost to the top of the uh, to the joint there so that tells me that one's high so I'll just put an H there and then it starts getting messy so I'm going to drain this one now and move on to the next one turn off the fuel guys it's going to be one of these days I don't know why that one should be tight but it was just a tiny bit so I'm going to pop the plug back in there now and take its friends out its friends out and move them to the next one put the pipe in there and we just do the same mark on the same carburetor because gravity will take care of the the difference, the distance right, just hold that there pop that back there you guys can see it put the fuel back on and let's see how that one comes Okay, that one is very high. That one is right up to the joint. In fact, it's over the joint. So that one's very high. Yeah. So, turn the fuel off again. Drain that one. The level plug in to number four. Okay, turn the fuel back on and see where we are at this end. And I put a similar mark on that float bowl. Again, it's a bit high. Although it is, in fairness, almost within the, the bound of what would be acceptable. But if I'm taking the others out, I'll do that one as well. Turn off the fuel. It really is quite a faff with these things, but. If you're doing it, you've got to get it right, so you might as well just bite the bullet and get on with it. Okay, and we'll do the last one now. You see if that's within the region I would like it to be. So I'll put the fuel on and hold the carbs level. Oh, vertical. And see where we end up. Yeah, miles high again. Absolutely miles high, that one's right up into the cab body there. So these are all, they all need to come down. Okay, let's make sure it's right. Yeah, that's right up touching. It's actually touching the edge of the, 
like the cab main body there. So that one's way too high. Okay. So whilst I've measured them one after the other, um, I'm going to adjust them one at a time. But now I've got to drain the bank. Otherwise it ends up tremendously messy. And this is one of the few things that I, I, you know, I, I use gloves all the time when I'm working or whenever I remember. I should wear them all the time but I tend to forget now and again. Um, well, by the time you, you can remember that you're not wearing them, you're in such a bloody state, it's hardly worth putting them back on. But, um, this, is, this is just one operation to get so messy. Because you're filling and emptying the cabs all the time. Okay, I've got a couple of float bowls off now. And just as points of reference, what I've got, I've used my vernier here, and I've measured the, the, the float heights just to see what they've got. The, um, all the books of uh, the manuals and things, including going online, it's all quite contradictory. And I, I, yeah, I've seen some as little as, you know, say three mil, but actually what it meant was, it was so 30 mil, but what it meant was 3.0 mil for the gap between, as I say, the carburetor face, and that's Mark subscribed on the, um, on the float bowl. But here, just as a point of reference, I'm going to measure these and then I'll give me something to know how far I've got to move them here. So I've measured them both. And as, as if to demonstrate that measuring the float heights isn't accurate, um, these are both exactly the same. They're both set to 26 mil. So if they're both 26, I want to bring this one down about a mil. So I'll, I'll, I'll move this one to get it to 27. And I'll move this one because it was very high to 28. And let's just take it from there. So... I'll pop out the, um, the little pins. To hold the floats in. When you measure these, just while I'm talking about it, you don't do them with the carbs vertical. You always have the carbs at an angle like this because the needle valve, which is that part here, I'm just going to pull out very gently. That's the needle valve, and as you'll see, that part there is sprung. And you can see I'm moving that up and down. So you need the float to rest on it, and that will dictate the height of the float, but not to have so much weight on it that it starts to depress the spring because that, that'll throw your fuel level out. Also, as these get old, the little springs get weak and that can just throw your um, the levels all to pot. So, just as a, another little tip, when you're putting these back on, if you think, my God, I can't remember which way they went. You know, and these are obvious because of the shape of the float, but it's not always the case. There's usually a mark that tells you where the needle valve has been sitting on the tang there. I don't know if, if you catch the light sufficiently or not. There's a little mark right there. That shows you where the needle's been working before, so that tells you that's where it should live. So, a little screwdriver. We'll pop one on either side here. And I want to move that float. I want to make that float move that way. This way. So I'm going to bend that tang there. That little tang needs to get bent down very slightly. So I'll put a little screwdriver on either side here. And just ease it down either side really gently. There we are, that should be sufficient. And let's just see what that gives us on the level. Come on. I've done this before, honestly. Wouldn't think so, the way I'm planning it. But you can just see the float is now just resting on that. So let's go down with a vernier that on the face of there and let's see if we've gained any height. 
Oh, I'm quite careful because it's quite easy to do. Just too much. Oop, there we go, we're just touching there. Just check again. Okay, we've gained about half a mil there, I don't think that's enough, so I'm going to take a little bit more. As I say guys, this can be quite a faff. Just touching the top of the float there now. Okay, that's more like it. We're getting a full mill there. This one likewise. And I'm going to do this one a bit more because it had a bit more to go. So, once again, screwdriver on either side. He's down gently. And if I'm doing this, I always think I've done it too much, and then you find you haven't done enough. I'm not saying that's the right way, the wrong way. Okay, and once again, just make sure it's just resting on the top. Of, you, you can see the sprung nature of the needle valve there. Okay, this one was very high. So, once again, just come down here and see what we've gained. Actually, I slipped there, but it wasn't, as you can see, it's not depressing there, it's just touching on it. Yeah, that's now sitting at 28, and it was at 26 before, so I think that's gained us sufficient. So, let me just pop these needle valves on, and we'll have a look at them together. Okay, I've got the float bolts back on now, and i put some new gaskets in. I, um, as ever, I couldn't find gaskets previously, so I went and bought some more, then I found some that I've already got. It's always the way of things, isn't it? So these are the old ones that are horrible and falling a bit. So I had some new ones, which are these chaps here. So I popped pop in those in. When I was taking them to bits, the gasket company never, which is something I hate. You know, most of you, anybody who's involved in engineering, you can always tell when someone's been there before uh, and what kind of caliber of engineer he is. But anyway, okay, I've turned the fuel back on. You'll just see it filling the float bowl up there. I'll move that pipe out of the way so you can see better. And you'll see if we've gained anything. And that is exactly what I'd hope it would be. So I'm really pleased with that one. Well, if you can see that, guys. Um, little, make sure that it's vertical. And the fuel is there. I hope your perspective is right, because the, the camera's just slightly above it, but... I can live with that, that's really, really good, I'm pleased with that. Um, just out of interest, while I was, what I measured the, uh, the floats up with previously, the, the float height when I was measuring them with the bowls off, was a thing called the vernier caliper. And um, geez, I'm sure you could use something else, you could use a rule uh, instead, an engineering rule. By the way, that's a rule, it's not a ruler, Her Majesty is a ruler, that's a rule. Engineering pedantry at its finest. So um, let's just put this back in here. As I say, you could use a rule and some other method like that, but these things can be had really cheaply online. You know, digital, they're all digital now, and they're just a few pounds, so you know, it's 
hardly a massive expense when you think about your pay for your bikes and the, the wherewithal to keep them going. Okay, let's see this one. Now this one, if you remember, was considerably higher. So let's see if it's come down. As I say, this does get really messy. Fuel back on, let's see what we've got. Now that's still showing we're really high there. So I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to drain that bowl and let's try again to be sure. I will tend to feed in from the other bowls when I'm doing this, but let me just try it again. Make sure I'm getting a true reading. Okay, so it's down way below the level of the bowl there now, I hope. Yes, it is. Level of the scribe mark. Turn that back on. Let's see what we get. Yeah, it's still too high, so I'm going to have to go back in and take that one down again. It is less high than it was, but it's still not good enough. So, give me a minute guys, I'll pop the bowl on. Okay, we're ready to go again. Let's give it a little whirl. Let's see where it ends up. There we are. That's far more like it there. Actually, it's still high. I'm going to take it a bit more. Hey right, guys, once again, I've got the float ball off. I'll pull the pin out. Put that there. And we'll just take a little bit more off that float height. Let's see what we get here. Too far there. And it's just kissing the top of it there. Right, that's 28 now. I wouldn't want to take that any further without without checking it again. So there's our gasket going. Put that back on, and then we'll check again. Okay, we'll just try that again. Get a bubble in it, it's not going to help. Get the bubble out, and there we are. That's right where I'd want it to be. We are right there, so that's perfect. I can live with that. I don't know if you can see that, guys. I don't know if you can see the mark. Can you see the if I'm just there? I hope you can see that. Okay, I'm happy with that one, so I'll move on to the next one at the other end. I've got numbers three and four uh, carburetors off, uh, carburetor float bowls off, and I've done the same thing before. I've taken a reference point from each of these floats just to give me something to work with and an idea how far I need to move them. So this one, which is showing us very high previously, is 25. The, the gap between the carburetor face and the top of the carburetor there, the top of the carburetor float there. Sorry, there. So that tells me, yeah, that, that would... When compared with the other ones, that would definitely give me a, a high reading. This one is 26, which is a little bit high, so I'll just do what I did before. So I'll take number four out, and I'll bend that very slightly. And then I'll do number three. 
and we'll bend the bejesus out of it. No, I won't. I'll just do it a bit, a bit less. Uh, okay, so I just get a screwdriver either side, and I'm just bending this really. With a, can you see that with a screwdriver on either side of that tang? And I'm just going to bend that. Oops, just bring it back up here a little bit, just so some, you know, just bending the tip. Okay, I'll do for that one. I do the inch pin somewhere, so I'll pop that back in. As I said previously, it's always good just to check the resistance on the um, on the needle valve spring because then it can really throw you out. I did a CD504 for a guy recently and it just calibration was all over the place and uh, trying to set the fuel levels up was just hopeless because the the needle valve springs were just so so weak. So we just got a new set of needle bars and popped them in, which is always good practice anyway. And um, we've got a really nice setting on them. The, cat, the, the bike ran really, really sweetly. Okay, let's see what we've got here. We had 25 before, so let's see what we've got now. Press that in the face and just ease that down till it just brushes the top of the float. Okay, and we now have. Seven, so I'm going to leave that where it is. And this one here is 28. I may have gone a bit far with that. But anyway, let's see. Put these back on. There's a gasket on that one, so I'll just stuck to it. Oops, bit of shite on the gasket face. Just for speed, I'll just pop a couple of screws in each, and then I'll do this right in front of you. <laughs> the sharp eyed among you will have noticed I'm using a flat bladed screwdriver to screw these. Pauses in. I know. What a thug. Okay, let's trim that over. Let's have a look at this one. See how far it went. Now, this was high before. Very scientific measurement. High and very high. Oh. And that. Is right on the money. I'm really pleased with that. That one is right there, just where I'd want it to be. So that one's a win. Turn the fuel back off. It's going far too well now. Now let's do the last one and see what that looks like. And then I've got something like we'll pop them on the bike, which is a very very pretty. Kawasaki Z650 or KZ650, potato potato. Behind me. It's a really sweet bike. You know, give you a treat, you can have a look at it. Oh, is that not sweet, guys? Eh? I'm going to try and get a, a better vantage than I had last time for you. I did the, the, the VM26s so you can really see the gauges being adjusted. Okay, and um, this one. That actually says it's still high, but. I'm not sure I believe it, so let's just drain them and be sure they're well drained. Oh, that float ball is well drained. And then we'll turn the fuel on and do it again. Don't have to 
check. <sighs> that one it is. Oh, there's a wee bubble in there. Come on out. There we are. Fuck me, if anything, it's a bit low. So I've gone up. Oh, is it just because that's sitting on it? No, I've gone too far with that one. Only marginally. But it is now in a fuel level. I don't know. Give it a second. Actually, no. That is there, and the mark is there. So, I am gonna, I'm gonna live with that. It's perhaps not right on the money. So, I'm really pleased with that. That'll do. So now, I'll put the cams back on the bike. Let's turn the fuel off. I'll put the cams back on the bike, and I'll speak to you in a few minutes. When we're ready to do the sinking. <laughs> right guys, I've got the carburetors back on this motorcycle now. I've not started it up yet, but I'm going to give you a terrible shock now. I'm going to come right up to the camera and I'll show you how I'm going to adjust this. And then we'll move the camera to a point where it can see the VAT gauges. And I hope what we're going to see is when it starts up and settles a little. Uh, I'll set it to a fast idle at about 2000 revs. And then what I should see... If you remember, I pointed out the bigger and the smaller gaps at the bottom of the slide between the slide and the carburetor body. So one of these is going to be, at one end it's going to be high in VAC and at one end it's going to be low. So we can adjust that and make them just right. So I'll show you what I'm going to adjust. Sorry for this, it's a terrible thing. Right, here we go. What I'm going to adjust, can you see there? There's a little screw there with a lock nut at the bottom. And I'll undo that lock nut. Come sir. And then that'll adjust for each. Now, of, on some carburetor sets, you've got um, three that will adjust and one which is a reference adjuster, and a, a reference carburetor, and you will adjust them all to match that. On, on these carbs, you haven't got that. So I'll find a couple that are um, there or thereabouts, and then I'll match the rest to it. So let's have a look now at the... I hope that focuses properly on the carbs, on the VAT gauges. And then we'll go down the other side, we'll start it and let's see what it does. It's going to get a bit noisy. Turn the fuel on. Let's see if it'll play. Go on, make an ass of me then, why don't you? These are very cold little engines, these 650s, they take quite a bit of warming up, so a bit of choke on just now, I'll get some warmth into it, then I'll knock it off and hope it'll, uh, it'll run nicely enough for me to adjust it. So, okay, ready to go. We've got the carbs back on the bike. Ouch. That hurt. <laughs> I've got the carbs back on the bike. And um, we're ready to start sinking them up now. So I've got a little bit of warmth into the engine, uh, so it, it should uh, set up nicely now. Um, I'm going to do as much as I can from that side of the bike so you can see the gauges while I'm adjusting it. So uh, let's see, let's hope this works. Okay. Okay, here we go. Got fuel on. It's turned on. You can see there, we've got one high and one very low as we thought when we started. So I'm going to adjust these now and bring them all into... These two are about the same, so I'm going to bring these two in line with these two.
Hi there. I was setting up these carburetors as you saw uh, yesterday and um, this gauge here wouldn't adjust to, to match its friends. So I checked that the gauge was was accurate, you know, just by swapping it along the banks and it was still the same uh, that this uh, carburetor here was at fault. So as ever you think it's something you've done rather than something that's wrong with the bike. So I've had these carbs in bits uh, previously, so I pulled them back off. I took them to bits and thought, I can't see anything wrong there, they're set up correctly, it should be fine. Put it back on the bike and it was still the same. And um, there will be those of you sitting watching this now thinking, I know what's wrong with this. But, um, and I should have spotted this previously, but you know, hindsight's a, hindsight's a, a really great thing, isn't it? You know, we're all good at, we're all good at hindsight. Uh, these little um, rubber joints that go between the carburetor and the uh, cylinder head um, were all nice and soft and pliable, so I was, I had no reason to suspect that they would not be biting down onto the carburetor properly. So, so by looking for the complexities, I neglected to look at the simple stuff. So there's a lesson for us all again, of course. Um, so I'm going to show you. I'm, I'm going to show you how I should have checked it from the start. So let's just start this bike. Yes, we'll run it. You can see the back in there is down. And that's because the joint between the road rubber and the cylinder head is poor. Listen. So it's this joint here, between this filler and the cylinder head that's at fault. Um, it was it was nice and soft, you know. That's where I, I, that's where it fooled me previously. This was nice and soft, and uh, I thought it maybe just wasn't biting down properly into the carburetor. And the fit of the clip wasn't quite the same as it was on the others. So someone's been in here before anyway, because one of the bolts is slightly different. But there we are. Um, another little lesson learned. So what I'm going to do now? Pop the carbs off. I'm going to see what's wrong with this joint, see if I can fix it, uh, just by, I'll pop this one if necessary from, I know this is from another bike I've got, um, and I'll rub this if necessary, and pop it on there. So let's just do that and then we'll see if we can sync up the carbs. Okay now, I've replaced that rubber with this one that, that I've nicked off the other bike. On the face of it, there doesn't look to be any fault with this, however, I've put the other one on and uh, Let's give it a whirl. So. Now you can see we're still a bit low there, but now that that's not leaking, you see that comes straight up to my kitchen bread. I'll get set it to the right speed. There, now, exactly what it should be in line with its bread. Well, I live with that. That's great, I'll live with that. What I'll do now, I'll put on a new set of these. These are rubbers that go between the carburetor and the airbox. Um, you can screw about with the old ones, but it really isn't worth it. I'm trying to get the carburetors on and off past a set of these that have gone really hard. They, they go as brittle and hard as anything. And you will want to push the bike off a cliff if you're messing about with these. So saw them off, you know, when you're taking the, the carburetors off. Get some new ones, they're about £40 for a set, they're worth every penny. Um, and then I can pop these in now really very easily and put the wee springs around that, um, that secure this, the carburetor in that little channel there. So, bit of a result. Cheers guys. So, how does it go? Well, I'll show you now.
Tell me that won't do. Thanks guys, see you next time. Thank you.